All right, Sopranos fans, let's dig into a question that's always been on our minds. Who was the most loyal to Tony within the mob? Loyalty in The Sopranos is a slippery concept, so I'm ranking a few key players from least to most loyal. And trust me, some might surprise you. Polly Walnuts, one of Tony's oldest friends and a key member of his inner circle, Polly was always around, cracking jokes and enforcing Tony's will. But when it comes to loyalty, Polly's position is far more complicated. In season 4, Polly felt slighted because he thought Tony wasn't paying enough attention to him while he was in jail. Not only was Polly upset that Tony didn't visit him enough, but he also thought Tony wasn't looking after his mother. He knows my mother, Zoo. Then he rules against me in this Morristown bullshit. This personal offense led Polly to cross a serious line. He shared a joke Ralph made about Ginny with Johnny Sack. In the Mafia, sharing information like that is a major betrayal. And that wasn't the only time Polly overstepped. Oh. Later, in season four, Polly shared sensitive information about the HUD arrangement with Johnny Sack again. This wasn't a slip up. Polly was actively looking to align himself with the Lupertazzi family, hedging his bets as he feared Tony's hold on the New Jersey crime family might be weakening. Let's talk about a moment that really shows Polly's true colors. Remember when Tony's stuck in a coma after getting shot? Instead of rallying behind the boss, Polly sees an opportunity. He holds back some cash from the Colombian score instead of handing it over to Carmela. Classic Polly move, right? It's pretty clear he's betting Tony's not making it out of that coma, so why not pocket a little extra for himself? But here's where it gets interesting. When Tony finally comes to, Carmela warns him, she's got her eye on the crew, especially Polly. She senses something shady is going down, and you gotta admit, she's not wrong. Polly does end up handing the money over, but you know why? Tony's getting better, and Polly's no fool. He knows if he doesn't cough up the cash, there's gonna be hell to pay later on. Despite his many moments of humor and charisma, Polly's loyalty was conditional. He cared more about his own survival and ambitions than he did about loyalty to Tony. Whether it was leaking info to Johnny Sack or making moves behind Tony's back, Polly wasn't the ride or die character he seemed. Sure, Polly whacked a lot of people and had some of the most memorable moments in the series. But when it came down to it, he wasn't above betraying Tony if it meant protecting his own interests. Oh! Christopher Moltisanti had one of the most complicated relationships with Tony. On one hand, Tony saw Christopher as a son, grooming him to one day take on a leadership role in the family. But Christopher was constantly caught between loyalty to Tony, loyalty to this thing of ours, and loyalty to his own desires. Oh! The most telling moment of his torn loyalty came when his fiancée Adriana revealed that she had been cooperating with the FBI. Despite their love for each other, Christopher chose to remain loyal to Tony by turning Adriana over, which ultimately led to her death. While this act showed loyalty to Tony, it was also a deeply conflicted moment. Christopher was always walking a fine line between loyalty and self-preservation. Christopher's drug addiction was another major factor that complicated his loyalty. Time and time again, his addiction put Tony and the family at risk such as when he showed up high to important meetings or when he lost control at crucial moments. His drug use wasn't just a personal failing. It was a form of disloyalty to Tony and the family business, as he knew how much it hurt everyone around him but couldn't stop. And then there was the moment in Season 6 when Christopher hinted to JT Dolan that he could bring everything crashing down with just one phone call. That phone call would have meant going to the authorities, a complete betrayal of Tony and the life they built together. While Christopher had moments of loyalty, his relationship with Tony was more one of codependency than genuine allegiance. It's about a wise guy with a big mouth and bigger dreams. Larry Boy was a quieter presence in Tony's crew, but his loyalty, or at least his strategic thinking, played an important role in keeping Tony safe. During the FBI crackdown in season six, Larry faced serious legal trouble. This could have been his chance to turn on Tony and secure a better deal for himself. But instead, Larry blamed the Willie overall murder on the conveniently deceased Jackie Sr. 
This move kept Tony out of the mess and showed that Larry wasn't quick to betray the boss when it mattered most. The ancient Romans had a word for it. Asshole. <laughs> Albert, on the other hand, had his doubts about Tony's leadership, particularly when it came to Tony's decision to kill Ralph Cifaretto over a horse. Albert wasn't convinced that this was the right move, and he voiced his concerns to Silvio, questioning whether Tony's judgment was sound. However, Albert never acted on these doubts, and he continued to follow Tony's lead. While Albert may not have been the most loyal soldier in Tony's crew, he wasn't disloyal either. He played his part, expressed his reservations in private, but ultimately didn't undermine Tony's authority. You gotta hand it to Albert Bariz for standing firm when Richie April tries to pull him into his scheme against Tony. When Richie asks Albert to join his side, the response is golden. Make a move against Tony Soprano. No way. Now you could say Albert is no fool. He probably sees that Richie is unpredictable, the kind of guy who'd turn on you the minute it suits him. Or maybe deep down, Albert respects Tony too much to even consider it. Either way, he makes the smart call. With Richie being reckless and Tony still the man at the top, aligning with Tony is Albert's way of playing it safe. Both Larry and Albert showed a measured kind of loyalty. Strategic, calculated, but nonetheless, they stayed on Tony's side when it counted. Can you imagine that? You get a facelift one week later you're in jail? Furio was the strong, silent type who followed orders without question. His loyalty to Tony was almost unquestionable, even when faced with an impossible situation. The most significant test of Furio's loyalty came when he developed feelings for Carmela, Tony's wife. Falling for the boss's wife in any mafia family is a death sentence. But instead of acting on his feelings, Furio chose to leave. He returned to Italy, knowing that staying in New Jersey would either lead to betraying Tony or getting himself killed. Beyond the Carmela situation, Furio was rock solid in his loyalty. He followed Tony's orders to the letter, whether it was roughing someone up or handling more sensitive tasks. He wasn't in it for power or glory. Furio's dedication was to Tony, and he understood the risks that came with the life he had chosen. His departure from the crew might have left a gap in Tony's inner circle, but it was a move that showed just how loyal Furio was. He knew the consequences of staying, and instead of risking betrayal, he removed himself from the equation entirely. Few people in Tony's life demonstrated that level of loyalty and discipline. Could you survive this, Pietzin? Ah, Gigi. He didn't get a ton of screen time, but in the moments he had, Gigi proved to be fiercely loyal. Take the moment when Tony picks him over Ralph Cifaretto to be capo of the crew in season three. Gigi was dependable, old school, and didn't stir up the kind of trouble that Ralphie did. And if Tony trusted him enough to put him in charge, that says a lot. One of Gigi's most loyal acts came during the war between Tony and Junior. Gigi had been part of Junior's crew for years, but when push came to shove, he sided with Tony. This guy is often overlooked, but there's a reason Tony trusted him, and it wasn't just because of his quiet demeanor. Remember Patsy Parisi's brother? Yeah, Gigi took him out with such skill that it left an impression on Tony. No sloppy work, no loose ends, just a clean hit, the way you'd expect from a top-tier mobster. Now, we've seen plenty of the crew fumble their tasks. I mean, how can we forget Polly's disaster in Pine Barrens? <laughs> That whole situation was a mess, with Polly and Chris stumbling around like they were in the woods for the first time. But Gigi? Nah, he wasn't about that. He handled his business, never talked about it again, and just kept moving forward. That's the kind of performance that earns respect in Tony's world. Sure, his death on the toilet was kind of a sad, undignified end for such a loyal guy, but that doesn't take away from the fact that Gigi was Tony's man through and through. If he hadn't died, it's likely he would have continued to be a key player in Tony's circle. The fact that Tony even put him in the running to be capo speaks volumes about his loyalty and capability. What's wrong with you? The skip's here. I'm on a roll here. You'll be on a slab you keep it up. Let's talk about Bobby for a sec. Because let's be real, Bobby's loyalty is something we gotta dive into. You'd think he's the poster boy for loyalty, right? I mean, 
The guy was absolutely devoted to his wife, and unlike practically everyone else in the crew, Bobby didn't even mess around with a Gumar. I mean, we all know how rare that is in this world. The only other guy who kept it clean like that was Johnny Sack. So yeah, Bobby was loyal, mostly. But here's the thing, I can't place him at the top of the loyalty list. And you know why? Season two. To the victor belongs to spoils. When we first meet Bobby, he's Junior's guy, and he's just kind of rolling with whatever Junior wants. Now, if you remember, by the end of that season, Junior had a big decision on his plate. Stick with Richie or side with Tony. And if Junior had picked Richie, that basically meant Tony was toast. And guess what? Bobby was cool with it. I mean, that's not exactly the kind of loyalty you'd expect from someone who'd later become so close to the guy. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this. Now, fast forward a bit, and yeah, Bobby did punch the boss in the face. Let's not forget that. Not exactly an act of loyalty either, but then again, Tony wasn't exactly innocent in that little scrap. Classic Tony, but here's where Bobby shines. When Tony made him make his bones and take someone out, Bobby did it. And it's important to remember, this guy had never killed anyone before. Tony knew it too. It's almost like a twisted rite of passage. You could say Bobby redeemed himself there, but it's also proof that no matter what, he was going to do what the boss asked, no questions. One of the reasons Bobby stands out though, is because he was genuinely the nicest guy in the whole crew. He wasn't out there starting beef with anyone, wasn't known for backstabbing or double-crossing. And at home, a model husband and father, the guy was practically allergic to violence. He only ever killed one person, and that was because Tony forced him to. He wasn't some bloodthirsty capo, and you gotta respect that in this world. Now, when we're talking about Bobby's loyalty, one thing that sticks with me is how, later in the series, he returned some money that Junior sent him. Bobby straight up said it wouldn't be right because of the whole shooting incident. I mean, how many other guys in that world would have done the same? Probably close to zero, but Bobby did it anyway. That's a different level of integrity. What are you looking at? I'm in awe of you. Man, if we're talking loyalty in The Sopranos, Sill's got it in spades. Out of these guys, he's easily the most loyal to Tony, hands down. The one time he kind of went against Tony, that whole floor tile debacle. But come on, it was just a mix up with the timeline. No big deal, right? I mean, we've been through a lot with Sill. The guy's practically family at this point, just like the rest of the crew. Irregardless, as Paulie would say, Sill played his part, said his piece, and still kept things running smoothly. But here's the thing, Sill's loyalty goes beyond the little stuff. Take the Blue Comet, for instance. Bert Gervasi tries pulling him into the whole New York plot to whack Tony. Sill could have easily taken that offer and walked away with his hands clean, but nah, he wasn't having it. He made a choice and took Bert out instead, sending a message to anyone thinking about crossing Tony. Don't even think about it. And let's be real, Tony trusted Sill the way nobody else could. Sill was more than just a conciliere. He was Tony's right-hand guy in every sense. When Ralph and Richie were going off the rails, or when Tony Blundetta went rogue with that unsanctioned hit, Silvio was always there with the kind of advice Tony needed to hear, even when it was hard. And sometimes, Sil didn't even need to say a word. That deadpan stare? It was his way of telling Tony, you're being an idiot and you know it. And the best part? It always worked. Sil wasn't a yes man. He supported Tony, no doubt, but he also knew when to push back, to make Tony see when he was screwing up, to help him clean up whatever mess he'd gotten himself into. Sill was that rare mix, loyal to a fault, but not afraid to keep Tony in check when it mattered most. And that's why he'll always be one of the most iconic characters in the series. Buona fortuna, Sill. You've earned it. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. When it comes to loyalty, Silvio Dante is easily at the top. Tony knew he could trust Sill with anything. He was rock solid and always had Tony's back. Bobby follows closely behind. While he may have been hesitant at first, Bobby proved himself as a loyal soldier who genuinely cared for Tony. Furio ranks high too. He chose to leave rather than betray Tony, a serious testament to his loyalty. 
Gigi was reliable and steady, while Larry played it smart, never betraying Tony, even when it could have saved him. Albert? He had doubts but never acted on them, so he lands somewhere in the middle. At the bottom of the loyalty list? That's where Polly Walnuts and Christopher Moltisanti sit. Polly was always playing both sides, looking out for his own skin. Chris, torn between his addiction and resentment, could never fully commit to Tony. Loyalty in The Sopranos was complicated, but Tony's trusted circle was small, and those few loyal ones really stood out. Who do you think was the most loyal to Tony? Let us know in the comments down below. Subscribe to Vano VHS and hit the notification bell. Meanwhile, check out our video on what really happened to Tony Soprano in the last episode, or find out who's the best boss, capo, soldier, and associate in The Sopranos. Don't miss out.